Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my week 36 wrap up. I finished some shorter things this week. So, to start off, I finished Rat Queen's Volume 1 Sass and Sorcery. And this is a graphic novel that I've been hearing about for a long, long time. And my husband had gotten his play money and wanted to go to the comic store and he very nicely bought me some comics. So you will see me talk about those throughout the rest of the month as I read them. This is essentially an RPG adventure story focusing on four women who are known as the Rat Queens and they go adventuring and do quests and the town that they are based in a lot of their issues inside the town have gone down since all these quest groups have come, but now the quest groups are the ones causing havoc and the townsfolk are not happy about it. Due to the actions of the adventurers and some damages that they cause, they are sent on an adventure and it doesn't work the way they expect it to. And then it just follows from there. And this was, a, as well as being a fun story, I really enjoyed the artwork. It made it very easy to read. and. I am definitely looking forward to picking up the rest of the series now. And then I finished two short stories, and both are going to be down below in the description, so if you want to go read them yourself. The first one is Matchmaker Matchmaker by E. Broderick. I actually got this recommendation from Kristen over Kristen Nell SFF Reader, and this is just a fun story. You don't want a place to get too bogged down genetically, and so you have and so you have marriages between other stations and other planets. And in this society, when a man is interested, he comes to your planet. And I'm, I'm guessing this is like a Jewish society, just because some of their traditions that they are talking about. And the main character, her planet, uh, the most eligible girls have already been married off. And it's one last guy has come and his only condition is the girl needs to know how to bake so she bakes a lot of things but the whole time is really thinking that she doesn't want to leave she enjoys her job and her best friend is here she doesn't want to leave her best friend and her best friend is also one of the three chosen to be interviewed for this young man and it's just fun to kind of watch the introspection of the character as she's coming to grips with one, this isn't a great system. Why does the man have to be the one to go choose a bride? Why can't the bride go choose a groom? But also, why go through this whole trick and pony show of being interviewed as a perspective? Why can't they, the people just meet and decide for themselves who they want to be with? And it was fun to kind of watch her with her realization of what she really wanted and I like how it ended. It was incredibly sweet. One of my favorites of the year, actually. And then the other short story I, I read is called Paid to Remember by Ahmad Aldin Aisha. He was one of the panelists that I watched a lot at the Hugos, and he shared some of his work around. He is an Egyptian writer who is fluent in English and Arabic, and this is written in English because I don't read Arabic. And it's about a story of Persians who are living on Mars and in their society they're trying to decide how to be innovative and how to prepare for the future at a time when they can live to excess, they have what they need, but should they? Should they do that? So I think the world building was really interesting, kind of how everything is set up on Mars. But I know that I'm missing some cultural cues as well when reading this story. Some things that didn't resonate with me is I think I just don't understand. For example, the main character buys strawberries and then washes them off with water and the comment is made for a Persian woman, this is something that you don't do. And it, it does get explained later but it was just a very different rhythm than what American English reading audi audiences are used to. And it reminds me of something in one of the panels I watched. The three 
panelists were all international and someone asked, well, what's different about international SFF? And they're like, the pacing and how they approach conflict. So it made me more aware as I was reading this, because I think if I had tried to read this before this convention, that I would have bounced off of it and just been like, yeah, no, I, I didn't like this at all. And now I'm like, okay, it's it's not my style, but there's elements that I definitely enjoyed as well as things that I wasn't my thing. Like there's poetry in here and, and I'm not a poetry person and that isn't specific to this short story. That's just a normal thing. And then I continued working on Slaying the Dragon by Ben Riggs. Got a little bit further into this. And I continued working on Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. I'm just reading this kind of section and bisection because there's so much information being thrown out. I understand now why people say that this falls under hard SF because it is definitely explaining the science behind the decisions that are being made. I then picked back up War Child by Karen Lochi. I started this a while ago and then because this is actually in our library alone, I had to send it back and then I finally was like, okay, let's get it back out again. Let's finish this that I picked up and just read a little bit. This one's also different as it doesn't have chapters, like each scene is labeled with a number and Roman numerals, so it's a little bit different reading it. And then next I picked up an ebook of The Nairo and the Beckoning Eroded Stone by Nada Amari. This is on my list of space opera written by non-white European ancestry. And I'm not sure what I think about this. It's not long, so there's about 60 pages left in it. It's a novella length. So once I finish it, I will give you more information about that. It's a slower, quieter reading week, but that's because lots of convention stuff. And then for my writing wrap up, I didn't write this week. But again, it was mostly focused on attending the science fiction pro writing aid week at conference that they had and then the Hugo convention. I got lots of inspiration and in fact even some stories that I came up with the idea years ago kind of came back to the forefront and I got new ideas of how to approach it so lots of fun brainstorming going on. And then for my other media I finished the Worldcon panels. I got to go to or I got to watch the replays of all the ones that I really really was most interested in watching and I know that if you are a mem and if you're an attending virtual or normal Hugo member the replay I think is good through the end of the month so if you were attended in person and are interested in what some of the virtual panels were about you can go watch them I definitely got some good recommendations of authors outside of the United States and United Kingdom to try and read. And then did a lot of binge watching of Disney Plus. Finished Loki, really enjoyed that first season. Watched WandaVision, got caught up on the Marvel movies that I had not seen. So The Immortals, Spider-Man No Way Home. Doctor Strange and the Multiver Madness of the Multiverse, something like that. And then this week on streaming, uh, Thor Love and Thunder came out, so we got to watch that as well. So just now have the other TV shows for Marvel to catch up on, and then I will see what else I'm interested in watching on Disney+. Plus. That's been my week. I hope you're already having a good September, and have a great day. Bye.